mm -hmm. playing uh, volleyball. <coughs> Excuse me. So keep him in prayer. It is, uh, I tell you, the enemy, the enemy does what he does, but he cannot steal what? The testimony. testimony. If God's been good to you, would you put your hands together and just <laughs> magnify him? Amen, 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 amen. God is so good. We're going to jump right into this tonight. Um, the book of Judges, 6th chapter, verse 1. It reads as this, And the children of Israel, watch this, did evil in the sight of the Lord, and the Lord delivered them into the hands of the what? The Midians, the Midians, for seven years. How many years? Seven, seven years. Hebrews 10.31. Hebrews 10.31 says this. It is a fearful and formable and terrible thing. This is out of the Amplified Version. To incur the divine penalties and be cast into the hands of the living God. It's a fearful thing to be cast into the hands of the living God. Tonight I'm going to talk to you from a subject entitled Ungrateful. 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 In the book of Judges, the, uh, the sixth chapter, when we go through that, uh, you will learn some things about the penalties. That seven-year penalty is because the people of God, what? Had no love, you see, or respect for who? For God. The people of God lost respect and love for who? God. God, right. So they were extremely what? Ungrateful. Ungrateful, here's the definition, if you want to write it down, if you don't have to, if you don't want to, but most of you know more, uh, mo most of this, if not all of it already. Ungrateful means unappreciative. Unappreciative. How do you know somebody's unappreciative? Just because they say thank you doesn't mean they really appreciate anything. That's good. That's good. Unappreciative is, uh, you know, have you ever given somebody something? Uh -oh. Watch out. That they ask for? Only to watch them tear it up? Or lose it. Jesus. And then when you say something about it, they get an attitude. <laughs> if, you haven't, if, you're, if, if you haven't done that, you're not a parent yet. <laughs> right? I let you use that, and what'd you do? I, bought, I spent my hard earned money for that, and, and in 15 minutes, you tore up, and you lost, you know. Uh, ungrateful. Unappreciative, not displaying gratitude, inability to display gratitude. Now, I, now here, I'm going I'm to tell you, this is an honest piece about me. Those that know me, I know that I mean this from the sincerity of my heart. I am a horrible receiver of gifts. I'm a horrible receiver of gifts. I'm very grateful, but I am not that, I don't know how to say thank, thank you enough. Amen, that's me. I don't, I don't know how to do it. You know, so people look at me like, do you really like it? I love it. But people are still looking at me like, I want a bigger punch for that. I, I, you know, and, I'm, and, and with everything in me, I'm excited, but I'm just not a good receiver. I'm a good giver. I love giving. You know, we call it the ooh-wee gift. I want to I wanna be the one, and you open it up. Mine's the best gift. You know, if I, you know if we, my, my grandkids will know this, and my kids know this. Their mom's going to buy them clothes and stuff like that. I'm going to buy them that thing they want. <laughs> You know, they possibly their mom didn't want them to have. I'm going to buy that. You know, because that's the thing. Because I'm going to get the greatest response out of them. Even though I'm horrible at giving a response, I want to be the one to cause a response from them. Gratitude. Not giving due return or recompense for benefits occurred. And that really, that summarizes what God does. How many of us really think, are thankful to God for all he's done for us? Really thankful. I mean, no, you know, just, just where God is number one. God, I don't care what nobody else says. You're number one. You know what I'm saying? But most people, most people in church are not giving due return or recompense for the benefits, what, conferred. They're ungrateful to what? Right here. Heirs. Ungrateful. Ungrateful. Unpleasant, distasteful, repellent. 
Now, this is not going to be up there. Here are some synonyms. Synonyms, sorry. Synonyms, yeah. Don't get on me for my tongue being tied. I'm going to give you a mic one day and watch your tongue tie. <laughs> synonyms, watch this. Selfish. Ungrateful. Selfish. Anybody know selfish people? Most people who are selfish do not believe they're selfish. Amen. Most people who are selfish do not believe they're selfish. It's got to be my way on my terms and how I see it. If you do it any other way, it is wrong. Selfish. Selfish. I'm thankful. Nobody knows anybody that's unthankful. We just talked about that a little bit, right? Right? How quick do we forget what people have done for us? Mm -hmm. How quick, right? Because the next bus that comes by, the next storm that comes by, the next thing that happens, we forget all about what somebody's done for us because now they made us mad. Does that make good sense? We're going to get into the scriptures here, but I, wanna, I just wanna, I want you to catch this before because the enemy is desirous to sift us as what? We. Okay? Demanding. It's a synonym. Demanding. You know any demanding people? Yes. Now, I want, I want to really take my time with this just for a second on the demanding part because demanding is not always those that are overly vocal. Because that's the first thought we have in our mind. Somebody that's demanding it to be their way because they're saying it out loud. Now, that is a part of it. But there are other people who are very quiet but yet demanding. Mm -hmm. yes. Right? I'm hungry, all right? I only have a little couple of dollars, so we're going to buy this. I'm not eating that. Or they just won't eat it until you take them to where they want to go. Or you do what they want to do. Or you do it how they want you to do it. They don't say nothing. They just be quiet. Demanding. Dissatisfied goes right with that, right? Dissatisfied. Never can please them. Never can please them. Or if they're pleased, they're pleased for a very short period of time. Very short period of time, and then they quickly forget. When we get into the scriptures today, you're going to find out that's exactly what Israel did, right? It started right out in verse 1. What did it say? For, because of their what? Disobedience because they left God. Guess what happened? They were put in bondage for seven years. Right? Why? Because God didn't like them? No! Because they picked up this one here. Grumbling. 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 Complainers. Any complainers? Don't raise your hand, please. Complainers. People who complain. Well, if God really was on my side, then this would happen. Nobody gets me, right? Grumbling, complaining, complaining. Why do I have to do all that to be saved? I don't know. Ask Jesus why he had to walk up a hill called Golgotha, hang on a tree or, or on a cross on a hill called Calvary. Ask him. Why did he have to shed his blood and die? Ask him why he had to take stripes across his back. The next time you think, why do you have to live holy? Why do you have to sacrifice? Why do you have to suffer? When he said, now if you, here's the here's interesting thing. We're grateful to suffer for the world. But we're not grateful to suffer for God. But the penalty or the, the benefit of suffering for God is if you suffer with him, you'll reign with him. The same thing is applied to the world. If you suffer for the world, you're going to reign with the world. And the world has a seat that's a lot hotter. <laughs> Are y'all with me? The, in matter of fact, it says like this, heaven and earth will pass away. But behold, my word will forever stand. So he's saying, I'm going to be forever, but there are going to be some people that will fall in a place. You see? 
where they're going to suffer for the world. I'm going to go through the things that the world says. I'm going to have the penalties of the world. I'm going to get diseases. I'm going to have uh, children that I shouldn't be having. Now, and I'm, not, I'm not, not talking about anybody. I'm just saying penalties. I'm going to suffer. I'm going to be broke. I'm going to lose my money. I'm going to lose my mind. I'm going to be addicted to alcohol or drugs. I'm going to, be, I'm going to go through all that. Why? Because that's what the world says I'm supposed to do. And so I'm going to suffer for them and I'm going to reign for them. Why? Matter of fact, if you're chasing the Joneses. You know, that, that's, that's a, a proverbial saying, right? I'm chasing the Joneses, trying to live up to somebody else's standard. You're doing that. You, all you're doing is suffering, trying to meet a goal that you'll never meet. Because the Joneses will always get something more and something new and something better. And you'll keep on trying to chase them. And next thing you know, you're in bankruptcy court. Right. Or doing something illegal, trying to make that money. Because you weren't grateful with what God gave us. Whatever condition you find yourself in, be therefore content. Be content in it. In other words, God says, I'm giving you this right now. If you can handle this, then I can give you something else. Because he gives to each one of us according to the measure of our faith. Now, our faith is little. Don't ask God for a whole lot. You ain't got faith for it. You can't even prove it because faith without works is dead. You ain't got no works behind your faith anyhow. All you got is a lot of talk. Does that sound mean? I hope not. And so when it doesn't happen like you wanted to happen, guess what you go to? Grumbling. Another one, self-centered. Now you change the words of the song. It's not about you. But it's all about me. You see what I'm saying? God, it ain't about you. It's my season right now. I'm going to do my thing right now. I'm going to be me right now. Because I'm not grateful that you got me off those drugs. I'm not grateful that you brought me out of that sin. I'm not grateful that you delivered me. I'm not grateful that that, that cancerous cell that should have took me out didn't take me out. I'm not grateful for any of that. I'm not grateful for the fact that you gave me the keys and the opportunity to live eternally with you. I'm not grateful for any of that. So it's because right now it's all about me. Self-centered. Unappreciative and unmindful. The second verse of Judges says this, And the hand of Midian prevailed against Israel, and because of the Midianites, the children of Israel made them the dens which are in the mountains and caves and strongholds. Watch this. They moved to a place where they are now left the city and they're living in the wilderness. God gave you a promised land. He opened the door, made the way, brought you across the Red Sea, got you out of uh, Egypt, brought you all the way over here, won war, battle after battle, and he's promised you this land. He's given it to you, and now you got it. You don't even like it. Well, you may like it, but you don't like it. Who gave it to you? Because you soon forget. Ungrateful. Ungrateful. Man. Look at them over there. They got more than we got. God, I know you did, you, you did good in your season, but your season's over there. It's my turn to do it now. And so they begin to turn away. And then all, here what took place. Midian begin to move in. They begin to take over. And now the people of God are now living in fear, hiding in caves. But guess what? Guess what? What happens is, is that you get used to being a cave dweller. Because everybody else is doing it. Right? So it must be good. Because everybody else is doing it. Now please forgive me for this. I'm older. You know, just forgive me. We don't have this problem here. But, so everybody starts wearing their pants low. And that becomes fashionable. How in the world is showing your behind fashionable? Especially on a hot day. Oh, oh. How is any of that fashionable? But somebody somewhere said this is what's cool. So all of a sudden people jump into that. Why? Because that's what it must be. Because somebody said it or somebody's doing it. So we jump on the bandwagon and we're, un we're ungrateful when God told us to be ye holy for I am holy. Told you to be modest. Told you to take care of yourself to cover yourself up. We don't like that anymore because that's no longer what cool. 
So then it infiltrates the church and then the church people and even in the pulpit, it starts happening. Because they're doing it down there, so this must be the way we have to do it over here. And so then it begins to push God totally out. And so with Israel, the same thing happened. Now everybody in the place is, is, is bending to the whim of the world. And now we're, in the, in, we're living in caves. And it must be cool to live in the caves. Right? Because we were ungrateful. God brought you out of, out of, out of, out of alcohol and drugs. But you go back to it. Why? Why would anybody ever do that? Why would everybody do that? God brought you out of a bad relationship. Why would you run back to a bad relationship? Why would you ever do that? Doesn't make good sense. Because we're not grateful with the life he gave us. Right? Because he gave us life, what? And life more abundantly. But we don't like that abundantly life. We like the life that everybody else has. Why in the world would light love darkness? And why in the world... Would life seek after death? Now, when I say that, I'm talking about the separation of God. Not, not we know we must decrease and he must increase. But, but and unless the seed dies, and, yeah, I get that. That's not what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about is, why in the world would anybody make up their mind and say, God, you've done some great things for me, but I'm going to tell you what, I think I can do it better. And so it was when Israel had sown, now watch this, Israel had what? Sown. Say it again. Sown. Everything that they put in the ground, they did it for their harvest, right? Everything that Israel had sown, that the Midianites came up and the Amalekites and the children of the east, even they came up against them. Watch this. Verse 4. And they encamped against them and destroyed the increase of the earth. Now wait a minute, wait a minute. We're living in, the, we're hiding in caves, we're planting our food, and when it's time for harvest, watch what happens. The harvest gets destroyed. And you wonder why you can't get out of the stuff you're in. Because you're a cave dweller. Because you're ungrateful. So you lost your home. Now you lost your increase. Y'all not getting this, are you? Huh? Yes, sir. Watch this. Till thou come unto Gaza and left no substance. Well, listen, they left nothing. No substance for Israel, neither sheep, nor oxen, nor ass. Now, wait a minute. They didn't only just wipe out their wheat crop, but they killed off their milk-providing cattle. Are y'all catching this? And then their beasts of burden. They wiped them out. Matter of fact, what they said is, we're going to take what you sowed and we're going to pre prevent you from ever sowing again. Jesus. All this because of what? They were ungrateful. Right? Chasing after what the world has to offer. Isn't it pretty? Come on, isn't it pretty? I, I know none of you all have ever been unsaved. You've been saved all your life. But isn't it amazing that, that they always portray, uh, the, the, I don't know if they do it anymore, but the, the, the alcohol commercials always had some, a big sexy party going on. Everybody was looking good. They never showed anybody throwing up in, in the toilet somewhere. They, they, never, they never showed people dying in car wrecks. They, they never showed people out there begging because they don't have anything. They never showed any of that. And back in the old days, they did the cigarette commercials. I don't think they even do those anymore. But back in those days, everybody was smoking was cool and handsome and cute and whatever. And they were just all sharp and all that stuff. But they never showed you the cancer. They never showed you any of that stuff. They never showed you the lungs uh, being torn up. They never showed you all the damage and stuff from that. They never showed you that, but they showed you how cool it was. Are y'all all right? Yes. Right? Because the world will always paint the picture of sin and make it pretty. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And so they develop stuff like the Playboy Club. Yeah, I'm getting with it tonight. Y'all all right? Yes, sir. 
and they make it look good. Oh, that's what I got to be. That's what I've got to achieve. And I'm not cool unless I'm achieving this position or this place. And I'm not doing this. And I'm not all over the place. And I, I'm not a player. I'm not, I'm not, you know, you know what I'm saying? Men and women, by the way, because it ain't just men trying to be players no more. Come on. All right. I'm not cool if I'm not doing this. Right. But but really what I'm saying is I'm ungrateful, God, because you delivered me from the wages of sin. But I'm going to jump back into the pool of sin that you delivered me from because that's what I want. Why? Because I'm ungrateful. Man. And so God has something for you. He says, all right. And since you didn't like what I gave you. Bit by bit, I'm going to take it away. Until you understand that you have no ability or authority to do anything of yourself. Verse 5 says, for they came up with their cattle and their tents and they came as grasshoppers for multitude. For both they and their camels were without number and they entered into the land to destroy it. What does the enemy want with your land? What does he want with your blessing? destroy it. What does he want to do with your testimony? Destroy your testimony. He could care less about it, but he just don't want you to have it. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, that's good. Hmm? You trying to thinking you all that and he's going to tear it up. And the Bible says and Israel was greatly watch this, impoverished. Right? Now, you're talking about hitting rock bottom now. Mm. These are the people of God. Never have the righteous been forsaken. Never have the seed begging bread. In all my days, I've never seen that. Right? That's what the scripture's talking about. So, what happened? When they lost the right to be called righteous, they now are subject to the penalties of the world. When you join allegiance with the world, when you get allegiance with the world, you are now subject to the rules of the world. Come on. And some of us may say, that's cool because that's what I've always known. Right. For you, that might be all you've always ever known, but the same end is the end. The wages of sin is death. Quit trying to figure a loophole. There is no loophole. The wages of sin is death. Wait a minute, hold on, but I'm just doing a little bit. No, 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 no. The wages of sin is death. Right. Well, I'm only telling a lie. Oh, no, 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 no. There is a place set aside in hell for liars. Uh, but I'm not really a bad person. I'm not really this. I'm not really that. I'm not really this. I'm not really that. Why? Uh, no, no, you're trying to find a loophole. There are no loopholes. And so, some of you, stick with me. Some of you... <laughs> Are still singing nursery rhymes. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. And true enough, Jesus does love us. Right? And of course, no father would ever send his son to the uh, pit. Hmm? Because Jesus loves all the little children. Right? And he'll never do anything like that. You're right. He won't. He doesn't have to because he set a law in motion saying that if you choose mm. to do the wrong thing, then you choose a destiny. Right. Well, maybe I got time later. Maybe you do, but maybe you don't. Huh? Come on. I will never play spiritual Russian roulette. I won't play it naturally. That's just for people who have got a loose screw. Or, two. Mm. or five. <laughs> but I'm definitely not going to play it spiritually. I'm not going to say, well, God, maybe you can, maybe, you know, I'll be able to, right when I get to take that last breath, forgive me. Oh. And I make it. <laughs> You see, because ungrateful people feel that they can come and go whenever they want to come and go. They owe God nothing. 
right? So the Bible says, And Israel was greatly impoverished because of the Midianites, and the children of Israel cried unto the Lord. Now, isn't it funny? Watch what happened. Look at the transition. Now, this is a seven-year process. This didn't happen overnight, people. Look at what happened. They began to cry. They began to cry. Some people know my previous occupation when I, I worked in law enforcement many, 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 many years ago. But the one thing that was across the board with the toughest people on the street was this. When they got to the jail, they wanted to make that phone call. They would call their mama, Mom, they start, it was kind of, you look at them like, aren't you the one that just told me that you was going to beat me up and do this to me and do that to me and do all this stuff? But they began to cry because what happens is when you get in a place where you know that there's no way out, then you want to cry. Now, God is merciful enough, right? But quit playing him like he's dumb. Don't take his kindness for weakness. God is merciful enough to see us where we are and say, all right, I'm going to give you an opportunity. Get it right. Come out of your sins. Get it together. Come on. I'm going to love you. I'm going to be with you. Come on. I need you to do right. This time is going to be a better time, right, isn't it? You're going to do right this time. But there's going to come a time. When the cry won't be heard. The old song said the heaven doors are going to be closed. And, and we, 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 we don't know when that is. We don't know when grace runs out for us individually. So me doing whatever I want to do is saying I'm ungrateful God and, and I, you know, I'm doing my thing over here. And quit trying to falsify gratefulness. Quit trying to fake it because, yeah, yeah, no, God, I, yeah, thank you for this here. You, you know, got me this. Thank you. But you're really not loving God? Right. You're not grateful for what he did. You're grateful for stuff you got. Don't mix this thing up. Watch this. A car, a house, a job, and money, those are fringe benefits. Those are fringe benefits. I'm grateful for those things, but that's not really what makes me grateful to God. What makes me grateful to God is not my health and my strength. That's not it. What makes me grateful to God is the opportunity for me to live forever with him in glory. That my gratefulness is you chose me out of all these people and decided you wanted to save me. I'm grateful for that. Right? That's good. When you get to the place where you can say and mean it, not just say it religiously, but say it and mean it. God, if you don't do another thing for me, I'm satisfied. When you can say that in your heart and just say, you know what? You know, you get to the place like the disciples. Silver and gold have I none. I ain't got nothing. I, ain't, I don't own nothing. Nothing I have. But God, I got you. Right. And that's enough. Yes. Huh? When you get that Paul spirit and you say, I consider these things all dumb. I, this stuff behind me, I'm not concerned with that any longer. Huh? What everybody else is chasing after I had. I gave it up for you. Right? right? We got it in reverse. We're trying to get what the world has when we already got God. We're trying to step out of heaven to dance around hell. Because the devil told you that it was a campfire. And they had some free food. And free men and women and free highs and, and all that stuff and all, um, free money and all that. So you you down here dancing around hell thinking it's a campfire until you wake up one day and realize where you are. That's what happened to Israel. All of a sudden when they woke up and said, nothing I do is working now. And they began to cry unto the Lord. The Bible says, And it came to pass when the children of Israel cried unto the Lord because of the Mennonites. Verse 8. That the Lord sent a prophet unto the children of Israel, which said unto them, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, I brought you up from Egypt. Now, now y'all know, what's the one thing that most people hate? They hate the I told you so. <laughs> Don't remind me. Right? <laughs> So they pray, God sent a prophet, he says, I brought you up from Egypt and brought you forth out of the house of bondage. Come on. 
And I delivered you out of the hand of the Egyptians and out of the hand of all that oppress you and drave them out from before you and gave you their land. Watch this. <laughs> Just in case you forgot who I am, let me tell you what I've done. Listen to this resume God's given them. Hmm? And I said unto you, I am the Lord your God. Fear not the gods of the Amorites in whose land ye dwell, but ye have not obeyed my voice. Right? Now, you understand, because they started worshiping Amorite gods. They, they, they just turned all the way. And, and, and some of you say, well, I'm not worshiping a false god. Yes, you are. You're worshiping yourself. Mm. That's idolatry. Mm. <laughs> and there came an angel of the Lord and sat under an oak, which was in Ophrah, that pertained unto Joash, Joash the Abba Ezraite, and his son Gideon th uh, threshed wheat by the winepress to hide it from the Midianites. Now watch this. Now we, we hear about, back up one more. We, we hear about Gideon, and we know the story, and a lot of us do, and some of you don't, but, but a lot know the story about Gideon. But here's what you didn't understand, or maybe, maybe we missed. Gideon was in hiding. Because he is threshing his wheat, not on the threshing floor, but he's hiding behind the wine press and doing it at night. Lest he get caught. Why? Because they, take, they had taken everything. So what little he had left, he was trying to hide. Y'all get that? Now you're talking about mighty men of God. The power of God was on them. They had already taken over the whole land. God told them, don't even worry about these, 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 these uh, gods of this, this strange land. Don't even worry about that. I gave you the land. It's yours. I've shown it to you. I've, I've, I've delivered it in your hands. You got it. Don't even worry about that stuff. But because they kept looking at what they had, they began to get enticed by that. Point. Garbage in equals garbage out. What you look at, what you focus at, what you listen to is what you'll become. That's why it's easy to tune out the voice of God when you've got carnal music busting in your eardrums. Right? I just like the beat. You a lie, devil. You like getting beat down. All right, now hit that right there. See? Because you're just falling prey to that. And then you're looking at stuff, ooh, because you know nowadays you can look at anything and nobody knows what you're looking at. You see. So you become what you what? Ingest. You what what you listen to, what you what you watch, you become that. Right? Because you're ungrateful with what God has given you. He's given you the good and you sell the good. For, uh, for, 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 the, for junk. Some things were made for honor, some for dishonor. Wood, stubble, and hay. Some people are chasing after that when God's giving you gold. You understand? Oh. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him and said unto him, The Lord is with thee, thou mighty man of valor. He's talking to who? Gideon. Gideon. Who's hiding? He's talking to Gideon while he's hiding. And Gideon said unto him, O oh my Lord, if the Lord be with us, why then? Is it, come on, is this, not, is this not how we act when we're when we out of the will of God? Why then has this befallen us? God, if, you, if God was with us, why are we going through this? Do you not remember how y'all doing crazy stuff out here? Don't you, don't you remember what you was doing in the club? Don't you remember how you skipped church so you could go hang out? Didn't you, don't you remember when you could have prayed but you let, you, you let something else influence you? Don't you remember uh, uh, when you said you were, you were holy but you looking unholy, you talking unholy, you acting unholy? Don't you remember all that stuff? And you're going to ask me if, if, if God is with me, how come this is going on in my life? Huh? You, we can never remember what we do. But we can always point our finger at God. Right. If God was real, this would never happen. If God really loved you, this would never happen. Really? Really? And what? Where be all his miracles? Man, is that, I mean, you don't know how many people I talk to that say stuff like this. I get tickled when people try to barter with God. I'll come to church if he does this. I'll believe in God if he does this. Will you believe in him if he stops your heart right now? 
You will. You will. You're going to believe it. Why? Because you're going, you're going to get an opportunity to feel a little heat under your feet. You know, I know he's real. Why? Because every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess. And where's his miracles with our fathers told us of? You know, we've heard the preaching, but where are they at? Where's my Goshen? See, did not the Lord bring us up out of Egypt? He just repeated what he was told. But now the Lord hath forsaken us and delivered us into the hands of the Midianites. Really? God has forsaken you? Or have you forsaken God? That's where we miss the mark right there. We want to blame God. We want to say, God, you forsake us, but not that we have forsaken you. How many in here right now can honestly say you have, you have lived the life that God wants you to live, and you've never forgotten to thank him? How many of you won't say that today? Thank you for not raising your hand. Because I could never thank him if I had 10,000 tongues and I confessed and I praised him all day long. I could still never thank him enough. Do you hear what I'm saying to you? It is impossible for me to do that. I should never be so arrogant to feel that I have thanked him enough. Right? You just have a thought run through your mind about something God's about to do or did or whatever. You ought to just be thank you. It should just be instant in your mind. When you just begin to look at somebody unsaved and say, I see them as saved. Thank, thank you. you. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Huh? Yes, it just automatically just roll off your lips. You shouldn't just be like, oh, I'm just, you know. And then what happens is then, right, because when we're ungrateful, guess what church becomes? Mm. Mundane. Mm. Just something we do. I'm just going because I'm supposed to be there. Right? When we're ungrateful, we're not, we're not going to give God a praise. We're going to sit there and we're just going to look at everybody else praising him and saying, that's not me. Right you are. Right you are because you're not grateful. See? My Lord, when I start thinking about the number of people that are sitting in a hospital right now, I start thinking about the number of wheelchairs that you see running through this city, just in this city. I start thinking about the homeless people just in this city. I start thinking about the abused children just in this city. Come on, I start thinking about that. Come on, all the struggles of people that are going through in this city. And, and who am I to say that I'm better than them? Not, not, not I. I'm here to tell you right now, God, I'm grateful because you kept me from that. Every time you see somebody standing on the corner, just saw somebody the other day, high as groceries, just standing there just like in a statue form, just in the middle of nowhere. And I'm sitting there going, God, bless them. Lord, help them. Save them. Why? Because I'm grateful because it could have been me. Yeah. One drink that I drank at a club that I shouldn't have been in, that somebody might have put something in, could have messed me up for the rest of my life. Because the enemy's going to tell you that you can handle it, dog. You got it, man. Just one. One incident or me thinking that I've got it like that. And it ain't, it's never going to catch me and it's never going to trap me. And I do something. And now all of a sudden I'm all messed up. Why do you think people are in the penitentiary? You think they knew they were going to get caught? <laughs> no. Because they thought they were slicker than everybody else. And that's why they're in there trying to give advice about how to do it. And I'm like this. If you wreck your car every time you get behind the wheel, please don't tell me how to drive. Well, would you, you, you got nothing to tell me about that. If, if you locked up, it didn't work for you. <laughs> Quit trying to tell me. Yeah, right, relationships. People, people with busted up relationships can't, can't have a good relationship with nobody. But they want to give you advice. Really? Come on. Really? <laughs> well, no, I understand. I know the rules. I've been divorced five times. And, uh, you know, and I, I'm just trying to tell you, this is how you make a relationship work. Well, you go prove your point first. <laughs> Quit telling me. Ungrateful people will not hear the voice of God who has proven himself time after time after time after time after time 
But we get all in ourselves. You know, when you got to talk yourself into something, you're already in the, bad, you're in the bad direction. Did you know that? When you've got to talk yourself into doing something out of the will of God, you're already in the wrong seat. No, we're in the wrong seat. That didn't make good sense. When you're weak and you can barely make it, and you're trying to believe that you're strong, and then watch this. Be very cautious of this too. Who do the weak people run to? Weak people. Because weaker people. Because weak people want somebody to think that they're strong. So when I see a bunch of weak people standing around together and chit-chatting and stuff, you know it's already trouble brewing. Somebody is getting ready to backslide. Come on. If not all of them. It's just automatic. You understand what I'm saying? I know those, the strong bear the infirmities of the weak, but when people start counseling, you start going to people, because you go to the weak people to talk to them, guess why? Because they're going to say what you want to hear. Right. Right? Because you're ungrateful of good, what, advice. Mm -hmm. So you go to ungodly counsel, right? Here it is, verse 14. And the Lord looked upon him and said, Go in this thy might, and thou shalt save Israel for the hand of the Midianites, from the hand of the Midianites. Have not I sent thee? Now, what is he saying? Yep, I know. You're a scaredy cat over here hiding behind a wine press. Yes, I know. Israel is all messed up right now. But I'm God, and I'm telling you to go. I, this is a catalyst right here. This is a turnaround in the story. This is where power just comes in and says, the humility is finally hit. You don't understand that? When we get humble, when we find humility, right? When we find humility, that's when God can really use us. Not until then. Not until then. I get tickled of people saying, yeah, I'm my ministry and I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. Okay. No one, you don't have a ministry. Right? And you may be very proficient in what you do. But if God ain't in it, it's for not. So uh, humility is the first step. And what Gideon was saying is we're nothing now. He started out with a little problem. He's like, you know, God said he was there, but he ain't there. What's going on? If he's for us, he's not doing nothing for us. But then it flipped. Right? And he began to talk about who they were. And he said to them, O oh Lord, wherewith shall I save Israel? Behold, my family is what? Poor in Manasseh. And I am the least in my father's house. We're poor, we don't have anything, and I am nobody. My family looks down on me because I am the weakest one. I am the poorest one. I am the lowliest one. How many ever felt like that? When you get to the place where you're humble, now I'm not talking no fake humbleness because there's some fake humbleness out there. You understand? Where you're just talking it and like, oh, I'm just so, oh, yeah, you know. Oh. No, 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 no. I mean when it's in the heart. You're just humble in the heart. I, you know, I'm really not capable of doing anything, God. Look at me. I'm hiding. And the Lord said unto him, surely I will be with thee and thou shalt smite the Midianites as one man. What? Come on. Come on. We'll pause just for a minute and I want to redirect you because here's what happens. We get used to walking in blessings. It is very dangerous to be blessed. Because when blessings keep flowing we began to take them for granted. Right. right? If you always ate at five-star restaurants and you had to step down and eat at a McDonald's, right? Because you're tired of the five-star food. So now you're eating this because you took that for granted. Then when you try to go back, it's no longer there for you. Right. Now you got an attitude. Do you know who I am? I'm like pulling up to the drive through excuse me. I am Joe Baloney, and um, 
I need to make sure that you get my Big Mac uh, prepared. I want 37 seeds on my bun, no more, not 35, not 36, not 38, 37 seeds. And, uh, I want my two all beef patties and the special sauce, but I want you to put the special sauce on there with my initials. Yeah, you see what I'm saying? Because arrogance will make you do some stupid stuff. And then the, the person on the, on the speaker is going, may I help you? You want a what? I'm, uh. And then you get that. Could you make sure you deliver it to my car? I'm going to park right here. Can you pull up to the second window, please? You, you, you understand? And so because of your arrogance, now you get a Big Mac that looks like a Big Mac because they don't have time to try to make you a special Big Mac. Amen. Right. Now you got an attitude because you think you should be the one. Right? It's Burger King in it, have it your way. Wrong restaurant. You see? You see what I'm saying? Arrogance will make you act all kind of ways because you think you deserve something. When in reality, you deserve nothing. When they got down to where they had to, where he had to hide, just to, come on. Anybody coming? Keep a look out. How are you threshing at night? They might have had a little lamp. How did you see? How much dirt were you picking up? How much stuff were you picking up that you shouldn't be picking up because you couldn't see? Huh? How much flack did you get with your seed? How much waste did you bring back? How much seed did you lose? Are you feeling me? Because you're now in a position where you understand, I used to have a threshing floor. I used to have a place where we could go. We used to have streets. We used to have stores. We could go to the market. We used to do those things, but now we can't do any of those things because we're in hiding. Why? Because God doesn't love me? No, because you love God. How, how many have felt the bump of God when you were getting out of his will? If you're not feeling the bump, then you're so far out of his will that you, you just turned him off. Mm. It's not that he's not still trying to bump you. You have just muted him and silenced him because you like what you're doing. You're full of yourself. Ungrateful. And he said unto him, If now I have found grace in thy sight, then show me a sign that thou talkest with me. Depart not hence, I pray thee, until I come unto thee and bring forth my present. And set it before thee, and he said, I will tarry until thou come again. And watch this, come on. And Gideon went in and made ready a kid, not a person. All right. I want y'all thinking he's into some human sacrifice stuff. Kid. A little small cow. Kid. An unleavened cake of an if, uh, uh, eff of a flour. And the flesh he put in a basket. And he put the broth in a pot. And he brought it out unto him under the oak tree and presented it. So what did he do? He went and got a sacrifice, prepared a sacrifice, and presented it to him. Right? And the angel of God said unto him, Take the flesh and the unleavened cakes and lay them upon a rock. Watch this. I want you to bring what you brought me and I just want you to put it on that rock. And then I want you to pour out the broth. I carry that broth all the way here and you want me to waste it? Pour it out. We starving in home. Pour out that broth. And he did so. What did he do? He did so. The biggest problem that we have and one of the number one signs that we are ungrateful is that we will not do what God says do. Then the angel of the Lord put forth the end of the staff that was in his hand and touched the flesh and the unleavened cake and there rose up fire out of the rock. Not on the rock, out of the rock. And consumed the flesh and the unleavened cakes. Then the angel of the Lord departed out of his sight. Stop. What do you think he did? What do you think he did when he saw that? I'm going to tell you. I'm glad you asked. 22. And when Gideon perceived that he was an angel of the Lord, he didn't know that all along. 
Gideon said, Alas, O Lord God, for because I have seen an angel of the Lord face to face, come on, and the Lord said unto him, Peace be unto thee, fear not, thou shalt not die. Do you understand what I'm saying? Finally, a light came on. I now know that God is still real. Come on. Then Gideon built an altar. Why? Because that's what we have to do. He built an altar there unto the Lord and called it Jehovah Shalom. Unto this day it is yet in Ophrah of the Abinazarites. Right? It's still there. Come on. Is that it? All right. So what happened? He built what? An altar. Now, let's go from the beginning. And don't, you, don't have to, you don't have to change anything. Just go from the beginning. Israel was put into bondage for seven years because of what? Their evil doing. Ungrateful. Ungratefulness, evil doing. Right. They, they, they didn't follow God any longer. Because they, and if you read through the rest of this chapter, you will see some of the things that they got involved in. They began to be very what? Idolatrous. Forgetting God. It is the same thing that happened, right, when Moses went up on the hill. And they were down, Aaron and they were down there making golden calves. I don't know how that calf got there. How did that calf get there? That gold just jumped in a pot, I guess. Right? How that happened? When we know that all the jewels they took out of Egypt weren't for them to wear, it was for them to prepare for the tabernacle. But they took them to wear them, and then that which they were wearing, they became idols to them. And so they took on that idolatrous stuff that they had, and then they boiled it down and made what? A golden calf. Same thing here. They began to look at the things that everybody else was doing, what everybody else said, what they were saying on TV with the movie. They didn't have that, but they, I'm just saying they're looking at the, today's, we're looking at the television, movies, YouTube, and stuff like that. We're seeing what other people are doing. We're watching other churches or even, even people that say they're saved, and we're looking at what they're doing, and all of a sudden, that must be what we need to do to do this, to get to where we need to get to, and all that stuff, and they forgot God. Because there's nothing that we can do. We can, we can come up with all the fancy stuff we can come up with. You can have the prettiest sanctuary, the biggest church. You can have a, a, a fleet of buses. You can have all that stuff and not be in the will of God. Right? You can have a pool fit full of 50 ministers and be totally out of the will of God. It doesn't matter. That stuff, it's not, you can't impress God with that. You have to be thankful, first of all, of your small things. You've got to say, God, I thank you for where I'm at right now. Right. And when you can shout about where you are, Hallelujah. where you are right now, when you can begin to shout about that and be grateful for that. I remember the old testimony said stuff like this. I'm not where I should be, but I thank God I'm not where I used to be. Now, I have a problem with the should be because that means that we've been holding back. I might say, God, I'm not exactly all the way where you're taking me, yeah. but I thank you for bringing me out of what you brought me out of, and I, I know I still got some rough edges, yeah. but God, please knock them off. We pray that prayer, like that song, please be patient with me. God is not through with me yet. I know y'all don't, a lot of that just went over your head. Right? It's a song. Please be patient with God. Well, first of all, what if he is? That's the bigger question. And number two, it is, not a, it is not a ballad for you to be able to sing to say that you're going to stay in your sin. Right? Really, it's not. It's not something you can just say, I'm going to just keep doing what I'm doing, and then when God gets ready to change me, he'll change me. That's not what we do. That's not what we do. Now, I'm going to, I'm going to kill the sacred cow. I'm going to move through this really, relatively quickly. It's 824. It's not real late. The sacred cow is right here because this is the scriptures that people use. Romans 7, 18. For I know that in me that is in my flesh dwelleth no good thing. 
For to will is present with me, but how to perform that which is good, I find not. Well, right there, that just says I can just sin all I want to do because there's nothing good in me. And done it. And then what people think? And they will use that. And, you know, because sinners will always try to come up with a scripture to try to let them do what they want to do. For the good that I would, I do not. The evil which I would not, that I do. Oh, I just can't. You know, I, I want to do right, but, you know, there's just something. Um, I got a few people in here that got a little age on them. Um, brother, you might remember this. Uh, Flip Wilson would say, the devil made me do it. <laughs> yeah, it was his calling card. The devil made me do it. And whatever it was, you know, then well, the devil made, didn't make you do it. I quit giving the devil all the credit. Huh? It is your will that is so powerful in you. That free will that God gave us is so powerful in you that you put the mute button on the will of God to hear your will. This is a testimony not of who Paul is, but who Paul was. And this is a scripture where people love to take this and run with that and talk about, you know, hey, I can do whatever I want to do because, you know, I'm trying, but, you know, I'm really not trying. Right? Isn't it amazing? If you really want to do something, you'll do it. Correct. If you really want something, you really, really want it, you're going to find a way to, to, to achieve that if possible. Right? But when it comes to God, you can always come up with that excuse. Well, you know, every time I desire to do good, evil is always present. I just, I don't know why. Why you keep doing that? You know, I don't know. I'm just weak. But thank God. Thank God for his favor and his blessings. Thank God for his, for his grace and his mercy because I'm just going to keep going the route I'm going. And, you know, one day maybe, maybe he'll open up the heavens and pour out a, 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 an anointing oil on my head and everything will change that day. God delivered us 2,000 years ago. It's up to us to make up our mind that we want to do that. Choose ye this day whom you will serve. Amen. Now, if I do that, I would not. It is no more I that do it. Now, who is it? Now, listen to what he said. If I do what I shouldn't be doing, who is it that does it? Hmm? But it's sin that dwelleth in me. Now, that sounds like a, like a Cadillac excuse. I can just do that because you know what? Hey, because I got some sin in me. Right? Now, we're in the flesh and no one's perfect. We're in the flesh and no one's perfect. But we do not have an excuse because we're in the flesh. That's why Jesus came in the flesh. Well, he was God. Well, the same spirit that raised him is the same spirit that quickened your mortal body filled with the Holy Ghost people. So you got that same power and authority. Greater things than this shall ye do. That's what he said. So you got that same power and that same authority. So stop saying that, well, he didn't taste sin back then. Well, he was tried on every side. He just chose not to do it. Our temptation is that we choose to do or not do. Most of us are not, excuse me, I shouldn't say that's not correct. Some of us choose to follow the trail of what sin because it's pleasing to our flesh. And I keep trying to tell you, five minutes of fantasy in your flesh can cause you a lifetime or eternity in hell. Right? Now, I get it, man. I, you know, I, it's better to enter in maim and lame. I get it. Did not enter in at all. I get that. But, bro, I don't want to walk around all messed up for the rest of my life, natural life, because I can't get it together. Because I want to try something. Now I got an itch that won't go away. You see? I got to live with that for the rest of my life. And I got a badge of dishonor that I got to walk around with. I don't want that in my life. God, thank you for saving me when you saved me, for delivering me when you delivered me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm grateful. I don't look down on people who have messed up. I don't look down on people who have, have, have had issues. I don't look down on them. I don't do that. Not at all. As a matter of fact, as a matter of fact, I realize if it had not been for God, there go I. 
I have been the same place, the same person. But because God delivered me, right? Now, because here's it's twofold. God delivered me, and I desire to stay delivered. Some people God delivers, they don't desire to stay delivered. I get it. I'm first generation. I, 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 I was calm as they come. But I haven't had a drink of alcohol since the day I was filled with the Holy Ghost. Over 30 something. <laughs> haven't smoked nothing. Haven't drank nothing. You know what I'm saying? Over 30 something years ago. Why? Because I made up my mind that I want to make it to heaven. Y'all look at me now because I'm 55. I've got a little snow on the top and think that, never, that, that throughout my whole saved life that I didn't have temptations like you have. I had every one that you got. Unless you got one to do something like really weird. <laughs> uh, I ain't never had that one. I ain't kissing a man with a beard. I mean, I know, no, no, kidding. Or without a beard. They ain't never look good to me. I ain't, I'm just saying. If y'all got that kind of spirit, I ain't never had that temptation. I don't need to be any plainer than that. But... All that other stuff, those temptations were there. But God delivered me from them all. From them all. And when I felt like I was about to fall, I learned a lesson to keep my eyes stayed on him. Yes. When I was about to mess up, look up unto the hill from which coming my help. My help coming from the Lord. I cannot look to my brother, my sister, nobody else. I got to look to God. Why? Because God is, you the one that's going to keep me. You the one that saved me. You the one that's going to bring me out. So when my flesh gets to acting up, my flesh gets to acting up, right? The Bible says, stir up the gift that's on the inside, right? I got to stir that back up and say, no, the, the spirit has been dormant too long. I've allowed the flesh to overcome and overtake too much. Now I've got to put the flesh back in its place. If you don't keep yourself, that flesh, under subjection, it will rise up and you will think you're right because it'll make you justify your sin. Yeah. And guess what you become? Ungrateful. Mm. Verse 21 says, and we're almost done. I find then a law that when I would do good, evil is what? Present with me. That's carte blanche. When you want to do good, evil is always there. Right? That's why when you walk in a room and you're already mad or you think somebody don't, you heard somebody don't like you, you will see them roll their eyes. <laughs> They're not even thinking about you. You haven't even crossed their mind. They're over there doing something like this because they're thinking or something, whatever. And you know, I told you they don't like me. Look at them over there rolling their eyes when I walked in here. The devil will magnify that mess and have you all messed up. Right. But if you come into church and say, God, I've got to deal with me because there's some stuff in me that don't feel right. <laughs> huh? Because evil is always present. I desire to make it, but evil is there. Right? But guess what? He has already overcome the world. He has already overcome the world. He has already overcome the evil. The evil is just a front. It is fake. It is, it's what, fake news? Is that what they call it? It is nothing. When it's trying to attack you, it has no authority. You just let it say, hey, no, I'm grateful. Well, you, you would have more if you did this. No, 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 I'm grateful for what God is doing for me. If you come on out here, you know, one more time ain't going to hurt you. Oh, no, 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 no. I'm too grateful. You, do you see this what he put on me? Do you see this, 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 this robe, this garment that he's dressed me in? You want me to go out there and do what with you? Are you kidding me? I'm too grateful. Come on. I'm not, you know, hey, well, parents, y'all understand this. Those little Easter outfits you get your kids. And you look out and they're out there running in the grass. Are you mad at them? Why'd you let them go out? No, I'm saying, you know, you mad because they can spill food all over that new little white outfit you bought them and all that good stuff, right? And you saying you just ungrateful? I told you why you got to why you sitting on that ground? Why you doing that? You fussing at them because of, what do you think about us? What do you think about your robe? What do you think about your garment that God's put on you? And you keep running out there. And you ball it up in the corner and throw it over there. And come, when, when it's time to act churchy, you pull it out and you come in, you put it on with all the wrinkles and stains, trying to play it off like you. Yes. 
See, blemishes. Amen. For he says, For I delight in the law of God after the inward man. Come on. But I see another law in my members, warring against the law of my mind. Where is the battle at? And bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members. Come on. O wretched man that I am, who shall, watch this, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? Y'all feeling this? Verse 25, watch what he says. I thank God. I'm grateful. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, so then with the mind I myself serve the law of God, but with the flesh, the law of sin. What's mightier? The law of God. Where is it at? In your mind. Right? Because the flesh is always wanting to what? Sin. This stuff here always wants to do sinful stuff. But the battle is won where? In your mind. You have to say yes. Right? You have to say yes. Somebody hit you, just came up and punched you in your jaw. You have to, that fist wants to ball up. You have to give that fist the authority from here, the authority to go back and. But if the mind says, no, peace be still, God's going to fight your battles. You'll walk away with your little bloody lip and black eye and, and walk off. And everybody will be calling you punk and no, you know, run all that kind of stuff. But you know that God's already got them. They'll walk down the step and break their leg. But see, you, <laughs> you, you understand what I'm saying? Your mind, it's in the mind. It's not, it's not there. It's not in the flesh. But the flesh is subject to this world. This is going, what? Ashes to ashes, dust to dust. This stuff is not, you, you see what I'm saying? But that, that inward man, there is therefore now To them which are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. We're going to stop right there. No condemnation. There is conviction. There should remain conviction. Yes, yes, yes. We should always have conviction. But we will not be condemned if we walk after the spirit and not after the flesh. Why? Because it's a choice that we make in our mind to be grateful or to be ungrateful. Amen. Let's pray. Lord, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for this message.